Ladies and gentlemen, new information in game has come to light that indicates this update with Mystique and Madeline may have originally been planned for only Mystique. If you go over to the bonus mission page and you go down to the growth bonus mission, you can see there are actually no rewards for Madeline. There only should be one, which is reached tier four with Madeline prior, but there are none at all. And it should be, I believe, 200 feathers or maybe 200 Emcron crystals, but there's nothing. It's actually only for tier fouring Mystique. Now that leads me to believe one of two things. Either they planned this all along and they just forgot to add Madeline or Madeline wasn't part of the original update. In any event, all of the speculation, all of the discussion, all of the ranting that I've done over the past three weeks about this update, you know, in the days leading up to it, the days of it, the days after it, etc. Um, I've sort of not given enough constructive criticism um, as to what they could have done better. So that's what I want to dedicate this video to really talking about, rather than talking about what went wrong, talk about really where the state of the game is right now and why this update does not work for the state of the game right now, because it's not a bad update for a lot of reasons, right? We've got a really strong new PvP character to compete with Jean Grey. We've got meta characters uh, potentially for PvP. We've got support characters. We've got meta characters for PvE. We've got a combat female uh, hero that we were asking for for a long time in, uh, in Hope Summers. We've got Havoc, right? There's lots of new characters. There's lots of, of meta. There's, there's quite a few meta shakeups. So why is this update not really resonating with people if that is the case? So I definitely want to dive into that in full today and, and talk about how the the cycle of the game has been broken by uh, poor decision making on the part of the developers. But before we get into that, I do want to make one final push for the MFF survey. I've been told by the creators that the survey is near 3000 responses. It's got about 27 or 2800 responses. I really think we can hit 3000 plus. I think it's easy with the number of players that are still active. So please fill out the survey if you haven't already, link it to people if you know they haven't filled it out already, send it to people in your alliance, you know, text them in game and tell them to, to meet you on Discord or Line or Twitter or whatever and send them the link to this so they can fill it out. Um, it, it, even if the devs don't see it, the fact that we got, think about it, 3,000 people to all answer the same question, that's more people than take some of the MFF surveys on the forums. So at this point, I'm just so hyped to imagine that the community could come up with a survey that actually has more responses than actual dev surveys you know it's like when the youtube channel for for someone covering a game has more subscribers than the official youtube channel for the game i just think that stuff is so amazing and it just shows how how vibrant and and you know awesome the the community is and finally i want to give a huge shout out to marvel future fight philippines this is a facebook group for marvel future fight for the, all the pinoys out there and they invited me to the group. I joined. I was welcomed. They were so awesome. So I wanted to give a huge shout out to them. I verified my identity now and we can proceed with the video. Before we can fully understand how Marvel Future Fight got to where it is today with lackluster updates, a jaded, confused, disillusioned player base, really disappointing tier fours, etc. We first have to look at how the game was just a few years ago. Because if you ask veterans of the game, and if you ask me, the game was amazing like two and a half years ago. I mean, sure, it had its faults, and it always has room for improvement, but it was in a much better place then than it is now. And that's really disappointing considering it's been, you know, two and a half years. Like, so much time has passed, you would expect things to get better or at least stay the same. But in my opinion, the reason why we've gone so far away from what worked is because the cycle of the game that was really well designed and in place has been broken. And in large part, Tier 4s broke that cycle. So we have to first revisit the cycle from a couple of years ago in order to understand how things have been ruined since then. So let's see the cycle in action. Step 1, you're playing game modes to build heroes up to Tier 2. We go counterclockwise up to Step 2, where now you're using those Tier 2 heroes in World Boss Ultimate and ABX that you built to then farm Tier 3 materials. Of course, then the next logical step is to use those Tier 3 materials to make Tier 3 characters. And then you use those Tier 3 characters to play World Boss Legend, GBR, and ABX to then get PvP materials and other things. And then you go to Step 4, which is the final step, and in my opinion, and a lot of players' opinions, the hardest step, which is PvP in Marvel Future Fight. You use those PvP Tier 3s to play Timeline Battle, etc., and you get crystals to buy cool stuff. Like, you know, del deluxe packs from Epic Quests and Legendary Battles and Uniforms. And then the cycle repeats itself back at step one because then they release new tier twos and you're like, hey, I can use those characters. I can build them up to tier three, etc., whatever. And this is the cycle of the game. And this cycle worked very well for a few years. 
But then, of course, we know what happened. The devs got greedy and got confused and got, you know, replaced. I don't know what happened, right? Different management teams come in, etc. Maybe the team gets downsized, right? COVID, all this stuff work from home. And a lot of things happen at the same time, right? We get a bunch of different enhancements and uh, power creeps to existing uh, ways of getting power. So you have premium cards, you have reforged CTPs, you have artifacts coming in, you have swords coming in, you have all this stuff, right? And then the, to top it all off, they add in tier fours. And this shatters the cycle because now the cycle is broken. And the cycle is broken for the same reason that we say it's always broken whenever we see a character like Exodus being released at tier twos. We no longer want to play game modes to build characters to tier two. It's pointless. You're, you're no longer told to play World Boss Ultimate. It's completely pointless. Get to World Boss Legend as soon as possible. You, you actually want to avoid playing World Boss Ultimate as much as possible. And just get to World Boss Legend and then just farm World Boss Legend. So you're starting all the players off at step three. Except now you're adding in a new step here after four where you're not using the PvP tier threes anymore because that doesn't work either. Do you see how this whole thing is broken? Because now you need tier fours for PvP. They, they, they ramped up the arms race, but they didn't stop to add in extra steps to alleviate the pressures on the player. And so the player is essentially left with a situation where they have to go through these steps on their own multiple times while not actually having fun. They actually have to skip buying cool stuff and they have to just hoard all of their resources in order to jump ahead to a secret fifth step where they just build up whatever meta tier four is ex in existence if they want any chance at actually being able to then harvest resources. Because let's be honest, not everyone plays to be the best. Most players do not play competitively, but you still want to feel like your progress means something when you do play. And so because of that, players are forced, because of this new system, players are forced to do this because they can no longer take their original tier threes that they worked so hard to get and go into PvP and get worthwhile rewards. And the devs have made it very clear over the last, oh, I don't know, nine years that they refuse to put crystals as a reward in any other content. They added a new PvP game mode, Otherworld Battle, and that's where they put even more crystals. So of course, right, this is going to be the gatekeeper. But now the gatekeeper is no longer tier threes, it's tier fours. And so it creates just this horrible imbalance and it breaks the cycle completely because now tier twos are worthless. And you essentially have to, you have to basically jump two steps. If you think of this uh, progression as a, a, a set of stairs that was created, originally the set of stairs looked like this and it was a smooth progression up. And so you don't understand it at first, but just like a baby, you can learn to walk eventually. But what's happened now is they've taken this model and they've basically like hyper hyperized it for whales and they've basically made one step here one step here and then this massive 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 jump up and then another step here so players will be like oh okay i understand this i'm gonna go yeah yeah tier three okay i'm done oops i hit a wall now what oh my tier threes aren't good enough oh i have to take my existing tier threes and make them into tier fours and then they'll be good enough so I have to put in all of this effort here without seeing any returns. All this extra time in was added, right? It's, sorry, it's, sorry, it's kind of getting cut off here by the edge of the screen, but all of this extra time was added in, all this extra grind, and none of this has been rewarded by players. This is all just assumed to be something that you either buckle down and you do, or you pay, or you go into the shop and you buy the packs and you skip this. And that's what, that's what, you know, that's what the whales do. They just skip ahead. And then they profit. But of course, everyone who can't do that, they get stuck here. Or they get stuck here. Or they get stuck here. And guess what? They uninstall. They uninstall. They uninstall. They quit. Right? So it's been broken. It's been broken. And we have to fix this. Since Marvel Future Fight has undergone these changes and adapted to Tier 4, so too must the cycle of the game adapt to accommodate Tier 4s. Which is why a traditional circle pattern won't work anymore. So I've devised a new idea. And again, this is just my idea. This is just my take on it. I'd love to hear yours, but it goes something like this. Step one sounds very familiar. You're going to be playing game modes to build up new heroes to tier two. And this is, of course, going into step two, in which you use those tier two heroes in World Boss Ultimate ABX to get tier three materials. These two steps are basically unchanged because they sort of have to remain unchanged because of the fact that the game still exists in a state where, you know, characters don't automatically come into your account at tier two. That's obviously an alternative uh, proposal that could be 
uh, designed, but that's not the one that I have in mind. However, here's where things get interesting. Because we're no longer working with a circle, the devs have to acknowledge that reward structures do not fit the current game model. So they have to do the following. They have to design two paths that the player chooses or elects to take. The first path uses tier three heroes to play world boss legend, GBR and ABL to uh, accumulate tier four materials. And we already have that essentially in play, but here's where it gets a little bit different. They also have to be able to use tier three heroes to play timeline battle, conquest, other world battle and story mode to get CTPs, Odins and artifacts. To an extent, this is how the current system works. However, it still needs to be updated. Rewards need to be improved in order to players, in order for players to feel like they can do both of these things or one of these things and still profit a great deal. Right now, the reward structures are just too small uh, for players to really feel like they're progressing. But here's the kicker. None of this matters if the final step is not good. And right now, we don't even have a final step. Right now, that's where the game ends. And this is why it's so frustrating, because you have Tier 4s directly competing with Tier 3s. So this no longer becomes an equal sign. These no longer become equal things to do. You're basically forced to choose what you're doing to get as much efficiency as possible to rush for Tier 4s to then meet Step 5, which is nothing. There's literally nothing in the game for Tier 4s to do except to make Tier 3s obsolete, which makes Step 3 feel stupid and makes this Step 4 feel stupid or whatever 3.5. It also makes this feel stupid. Why am I farming for Tier 3 materials? I just want to jump ahead to Tier 4. And so the game needs Step 5 badly, which is the following. Use Tier 4 heroes in a new awesome game mode to farm crystals and to farm other top tier rewards. If you're telling the players that their ultimate goal is to build up tier, to tier four, then you have to reward them with the ultimate prize. The ultimate prize for building up tier fours has to be premium currency, has to be other top tier rewards, and has to be fun. Because right now, the game is not designed to be fun. And right now, players are being incentivized to grind for tier fours to basically make the rest of their roster obsolete. It makes no sense at all. You're not studying to get smarter, you're studying to forget the stuff that you learned before. That's not how the game should work, especially since the tier 3s that are becoming obsolete because of new tier 4s could then leapfrog those existing tier 4s if they get tier 4 in the future. So for example, we saw a lot of that last year where Shadow Shell came out and she leapfrogged Black Widow and made Black Widow obsolete. And then Gamora comes out and leapfrogs Shadow Shell and makes Shadow Shell obsolete. So now Black Widow and Shadow Shell are obsolete and all the tier three speed types are obsolete because we have Gamora. But then Spider Gwen comes out and does the exact same thing to Gamora and Shadow Shell and uh, Black Widow before her. And the cycle continues. And that's because the cycle is broken right now. We cannot keep going in a circle because tier four is just ruined the circle, completely destroyed the circle. And so we need to have an alternative. And this is, in my opinion, one of the better answers. This is not the only answer, of course. Uh, obviously, there's an answer where they just do nothing and they just ride out the game for as long as they can. But I genuinely think we need a new game mode for Tier 4s only. We need improvements and adjustments to the existing rewards for Tier 2 and Tier 3 and Tier 4 materials in order to smooth out the progression. Because right now, the progression is still step, step, step. And then a massive, massive climb and then another step. And it just it cannot be like that. It has to be a smooth progression. And frankly, the steps at the beginning should be short and very easy to get over. And then you can bring some larger steps in later because the player base by that point has already committed enough time for you to know that they're committed and they're in it for the long haul. So I don't mind farming getting a like I don't mind, you know, the, the build the building blocks for characters getting a little bit longer to build. You know, going from tier one to tier two should be just a couple of days. Going from tier two to tier three should be like a week, maybe a week, a two weeks tops. And then going from tier three to tier four, maybe that takes a little bit longer. That takes a month. That's fine. But right now it's, you know, it's, it's a week or two for tier two. It's a, it's a couple more weeks for tier three. It's so long. And by that time you're like, oh man, uh, uh, tier three, am I done? I've been working on this character for a month. And it's like, no, you're not done. You're not, you're not even close to done. Now you have to go to tier four, buddy. And that takes more than a month. So you're like, man, I got to spend like more than two months just to build one character and there's 260 characters. And you're telling me that because you guys are dropping two to three tier fours per update, by the time I'm done making this character, they might already be obsolete. I'm not playing this game anymore. I'm out. See ya. So this needs to be the ultimate goal. 
this goal needs to be not only obtainable, but it needs to be attractive. It needs to be an attractive goal with attractive rewards like crystals and like very, you know, top tier materials, top tier rewards, top tier prizes, and it needs to be fun. It can't just be a new world boss that's a little bit harder than Kang. That's not going to cut it anymore, right? It needs to be new. It needs to be fresh. And it needs to be engaging to the player base to make this path, make this journey worthwhile. Because otherwise, I think the game is doomed. Anywho, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.